Just FYI, there's someone outside your door. He won't leave. I had to call 911. You can't do this. You set an example of what not to do. Of like the what? You are. No one has ever made it by breaking in or walking over. I'm not breaking in, though. You no, are you're, not. In, you're in the facility. This is a building with a closed door and a lock and key. And you snuck in the front door and you came up the stairs. Look, I, I don't know if this guy wanted to hurt me, if he wanted a selfie with me. I have no idea what he wanted. But when he was confronted by three people who clearly know me, he refused to leave. There's an alarmingly increasing trend going on, and that's stalking YouTubers. Yup, you heard that right. There's literally a fan in our backyard. He literally walked in through that door right there, dude. I feel like I should say- wait, hold on. I'll come outside and say what's up to you guys, but you can't be in our backyard, sadly. Some cases not quite the literal definition of stalking, but still wrong and disrespectful, while other cases have been fatal. The latest story happening to James Charles. Hi, sisters! A 19-year-old YouTuber who has garnered over 12 million subscribers creating makeup-focused videos. Fans have repeatedly shown up to his home expecting to be welcomed with open arms, not realizing how ill man their behavior actually is. James tweeted, Please stop showing up at my house. I will not hug you, I will not take a photo with you, and I absolutely will not sign your palette. It is extremely disrespectful and makes me feel very unsafe in my own home. Respect people's privacy. It's really not that hard. The public majority agree with James's statement. However, quite a few people feel that this is the life they ask for when choosing to be famous, or that fans are entitled to whatever they want since the fans are who made them famous. One person tweeting back, they made you who you are, else you would be living in a box. Surprisingly, not many big YouTubers talk about the situation in depth. Perhaps they're afraid of seeming ungrateful or they're afraid of copycats, but it's a rising event that has been happening more and more. Welcome to Sec IRL, my name is Sana. Okay, so I know some of you are going to say, well, if YouTubers really didn't want people visiting their homes, they shouldn't have let their address out into the public or they should have been a little bit more careful. Well, I'm here to tell you that your location is easier to find than you think. Look yourself up on Google. If not, look up your parents' first and last name up on Google. Okay, now let's say you don't tell your first and last name to the public. And you don't even film your surrounding locations. Unfortunately, it's still possible to find your location. Shia LaBeouf had a live stream of this flag, which had text printed on it saying, he will not divide us. It was a form of protest slash art installation upon Donald Trump winning the US presidential election. 4chan being the case chaotic neutral that it is, made it its goal to troll Shia LaBeouf at all costs. His live streams prior to this one were repeatedly infiltrated by trolls who used the surroundings as clues to figure out the location of the live stream. So he placed this flag where there weren't any surrounding clues or so you'd think. By examining wind patterns, flight patterns, the position of stars, and even the frog sounds in the background, the flag was found in about one day. So the point of me telling you that story is that, sure, it may be a little hard, but it's not impossible for me to figure out your address without you explicitly telling me it. James Charles isn't the only personality this has happened to. PewDiePie has a dedicated video telling people to not show up to his house. Just because you found my address, doesn't mean you found an invitation for you to come over. This should be obvious. Joey Graceffa has also shared his story about a fan who hired a private investigator just to find out where he lives. There are also numerous videos of fans and even haters trespassing on YouTuber Roman Atwood's home. This channel is creepily filming his home from a distance. The latest happening just a month ago. This has happened so much, Atwood has a police officer posted at his property 24 seven. Philip DeFranco had someone walk into his studio while uh, he was filming. Oh, are you looking for a, uh, what are you looking for? Anyone. Anyone? Okay. I was only What's that? Oh, wait, can you open? Oh, I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Yeah. Oh. Wait, let's open this real quick. Sorry. No, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that was interesting. Hmm. 
Someone found our office and just walked into my room. And though not illegal, since roads are public, but still a bit creepy, you have fans who drive by and film YouTubers' houses. Shane Dawson's house. Hashtag hanging with Shane. We didn't like enter in. We weren't trespassing. We literally were just on the street. A couple of civilians just parked their car on a nice curb, took in the view, and then we left. Though a majority of people think none of this behavior is okay, there are many who feel that this is perfectly normal due to the fact YouTubers choose to share their lives online. Julian Solomita, Jenna Marbles' boyfriend, posted a video where he asked fans to stop showing up at their house. Some in the comments claimed he seemed like he had a hatred for fans or that that he was overreacting. A grown ass woman drove up with her son asking if she knew if this was the street Jenna Marbles lived on. Um, and so I, I said to her, I said, you can't be here. I said, this is not okay. And she said, I don't know. All of these parents nowadays are taking their kids to these YouTubers houses. It's pretty crazy. And I said, yeah, you drove here. You were the crazy, like you were that. You were the problem here. I don't know why you're trying to act like you're on my team. I said, I think it's best if you leave. And she said, oh, well, we just parked because we're just gonna go for a walk. And I said, no, you didn't. Like you came to our house. So if you could please leave, that might be best. You see that same exact response in the James Charles situation, when James says he won't give a fan a hug if they show up at his house. Someone responded, imagine feeling unsafe for being asked for hugs. Now, clearly the examples I've mentioned are people who don't have a clear understanding of boundaries and privacy. Despite being very disrespectful and something they shouldn't have done, thankfully the behavior was harmless. And when I say harmless, I mean that in a literal sense, because no one was hurt. There have been incidents when things have been fatal, so this reaction from your favorite creators are valid. YouTubers Gavin Free and Megan Turney had their home broken into by an obsessed fan. The fan was in his early 20s, lived alone, and believed to be infatuated with Turney. Turney is an internet personality known for her cosplay. She's a former host of SourceFed and The Know. His obsession with her led him to feel resentment toward Gavin Free and the couple's overall relationship. His phone was littered with notes like, I want Gavin Free to die alone with no children. He drove 11 hours to the couple's home with the intent to harm. At around 3 in the morning, he fired into the couple's home so that he could enter. Awoken by the gunshot, the couple hid and called 911 while the fan searched for them in the house. Just as the obsessed fan was about to leave, he exchanged fire with the police and was hit. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Luckily, the couple was unharmed. And how can we forget about Christina Grimmie's death, where she was shot and killed at her own meet and greet? This was one of the things that I actually felt affected by. Usually when I hear about a celebrity's death, I am I feel a little bit detached. It's not that I don't feel sad, but there is a certain sort of, I, I do feel a little bit removed from them. But with this, I actually felt a little more sad and a little bit more scared. I can't figure out exactly why I felt that way, but uh, I did. And more importantly, I was left with the I don't get it type feeling. How could something like this happen to someone who is so uncontroversial, so sweet? And still, if I think about it long enough, I still don't understand. This isn't a new development, though. Traditional celebrities have faced similar plights. In 1996, a man served a 10-year prison sentence for stalking and threatening singer Madonna. After invading her property several times, he left her notes that said, Will you be my wife for keeps? On one occasion, he threatened to slice her throat from ear to ear if she did not marry him. Though the condition is rare and needs more research, many who exhibit this behavior may be afflicted by erotomania. Erotomania is a form of paranoid delusion, often also linked with other psychiatric disorders, where the affected person strongly believes that another person is in love with him or her. Usually, the object of desire is of higher social status than the affected person. They often believe that the person of desire is sending them secret messages of affirmation. The growth of the internet personality has possibly changed the dynamic of this event. Instead of secret subliminal messages the affected person has to piece together, social media has it so you actually feel like you're talking one-on-one -on -one with your favorite personality. The YouTuber is this new thing where it's like, 
you make the audience feel like you're their best friend. Mm -hmm. And it's people who are a little bit, you know, socially awkward and stuff. It's like, and then when they realize that they're not your best friend or you're Mm -hmm. not in love with them or, you know, all these YouTubers, I love you, I love you, I love you, buy my book, I love you. But then like once the viewer's like, like, do you really love me? It's And they find out you don't. Right. They're going to snap. Right. And I feel like it's just going to keep happening with especially with how youtubers now are so over like i've tried to take yeah, they ham it up they ham it up ham it up so yeah. much despite fatalities being rare it is still often the case that fans forget personal boundaries when it comes to their favorite youtuber since videos are so personal even i have come under the illusion that i know this person more than i actually do now imagine a young person who may have a blurred line between reality and entertainment may feel so yes if you are a personality this does come with the territory and you have to take precaution as best you can. But this can't be something the general public should just dismiss as part of the job. People deserve to be treated with respect. All the YouTubers that I featured in this video have said that 99% of their fans do respect them. It's just that 1% that really ruins it for the rest of everyone else. As promised, I did say that I would shout out everyone who retweeted my last video about Article 13. What up, I thought that I would be able to see all the retweets, but I can't. I can only see some of them. So I'm gonna only unfortunately shout out all the ones that I can see. I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. Thank you again for retweeting that video. I know it's not a very interesting topic, but it is a very important one. So thank you a million times over and over again. Uh, that's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.